welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I am back to let you know the next six books that my team, Book Invasion, is going to be reading. Last video I showed you the three books that we were passing on to two other teams, and we have gotten two other teams' three top books and we are gonna be reading that. And then for how they're gonna do the scores is they're gonna still look at the original team's scores and then they're going to use ours as well then to rank the semi-finalists in order to get our seven finalists at the end of this phase. And we are supposed to have all of our scores in by the 24th of April so that we can announce the finalists on the 1st of May. I know that we've had judges and we've had the authors all asking, when are we going to get this information? And so we're trying to make it more clear at this point. We've listened and this is the what we're trying to do to make sure that for this next phase, everyone knows what's going on. What I'm going to be talking about in this video is I'm just going to give you the name and the author and kind of my brief thoughts looking at the cover and the synopsis to start off with. I should also tell you what teams the books came from. That way you know. We got the three semi-finalists from the GSV Galactic Beards and then Space Leftovers. And I'm going to look for their channels and put their judges information down below so you can see what's going on. I don't know at this moment who, which were the two teams that got our books originally, but I will also look at that information and put their information down below. That way, if you were following the original Book Invasion team books, you will know where our semi-finalists have gone to. So the first book I have is Galaxy Cruise, The Maiden Voyage by Marcus Alexander Hart. It's always weird to me when I see the series name first and see that bigger on a book. I'm not used to that. It throws me off when I look for titles. Okay, so this cover is definitely giving me like space opera vibes and I love space opera. So I'm curious and it looks like a cruise ship. So that will be interesting. Oh my. I am not going to read the, oh, I guess I will go ahead and read the synopsis. This one is short. Humanity needed a hero and it got a karaoke DJ. Leo McGavin is not the brightest specimen of humanity, but when he inadvertently rescues a flirty alien heiress, he's promoted from second rate lounge entertainer to captain of the galaxy's most sophisticated cruise ship. Before he can flee in terror, a human-hating executive gives Leo an ultimatum. Complete the vessel's maiden voyage or mankind's last colony will be turned into a sewage dump. To make matters worse, a militant cyborg is undermining his authority. A giant spider is terrifying the passengers, and a sentient plant keeps stealing, stealing all the beer. If Leo ever wants to see his home again, he'll have to keep the guests happy through seven days of onboard antics and madcap shore excursions, as strange malfunctions tear the ship apart, can he hold the, can he hold his ragtag crew together, or will he flush the last bastion of humanity down the cart or down the crapper? Yep, the genres it's showing me is like science fiction, humor, and space opera. So this will hopefully work out well for me. Um, it, it sounds interesting. It would definitely be something that I would give a go to. So next we have Light Blade by Zamel Akhtar, which I recognize that name. Ah yes, I have heard Taylor from Made Between the Pages talk about gunmetal gods a lot, which is a fantasy I believe by him. So this one's interesting. The vibe of the cover is with the dragon and the swords definitely makes me think more fantasy. So I'm kind of curious how the sci-fi element is going to come out. So the synopsis, one day uh, Jayush will climb the heavens and slay a dragon god. 
though nothing could seem less likely for a slave, especially one whose body is too broken to cycle sunshine into destructive magical energy, until he meets a woman who can secretly teach him the light blade, an energy sword transmuted from sunlight capable of changing size, shape, and performing incredible magical feats according to the wielder's skill level. Except she only exists in his dreams. Each hour of sleep equals a day in these shared lucid dreams, wherein he must master new light laid abilities, bond with his teacher and other allies, and gain the fortitude to overcome his weakness and crush his enemies. When Jayash awakens to learn that a mysterious light blade master who also commands an armada of sky ships is spreading destruction uh, destruction across the land, he'll face a trial by fire against forces far more frightening than he could ever dream. And forged from that fire, a light ascendant will rise. Okay, so kind of, I definitely still see the fantasy. Um, I mean, you have sky ships. That couldn't be, it all depends how they're powered, whether that is science fiction or not. I mean, so this kind of reminds me of at the last world con I attended, I did the virtual. And so I got to attend panels by many international authors. A lot of them talked about how in the United States, we very firmly define fantasies over here and science fiction here. But for a lot of other cultures, there's a lot more mixing. And I'm wondering if this is going to be more of that where somebody from the United States is going to be like, oh, this is more fantasy, but it, a more international audience is going to be like, oh, dude, this is science fiction. doesn't matter if there's fantasy elements or not. We have science fiction here. So I'm curious about this one. I, I'm more because I'm also curious about the author already, thanks to Taylor. All right, so next we have Reaper by Elliot Pepper. That's interesting. And that's Reaper with that second E being a three. All right. Uh, yeah, so the cover is not giving me a whole lot. So let's go ahead and go with the synopsis. Nothing is what it seems in the speculative thriller about a quantum computer scientist, virologist, podcaster, venture capitalist, and assassin coming together to untangle a twisted enigma that will change the course of future history. Everyone has something to hide, and every transgression is a portal to discovery, taking you on a whirlwind journey from the heart of San Francisco Bay Area to the distant shores of the Galapagos. Reaper is a propulsive adventure that grapples with the price of progress and how technology shapes our lives and world. Okay. I mean, that doesn't really tell me a lot about the story. It, 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 I mean, it does let me know it's definitely like sci-fi. Sci and it's set in our world, so that will be interesting. So next we have The Pone Away, a solar punk novel by Kirsten M. Corby. And the whole fact that it's solar punk really has me interested. I have been wanting to read more solar punk lately. And looking at the cover, like the buildings that I'm seeing kind of reminds me of uh, elven buildings in like Lord of the Rings. Okay. Uh, in 2050, so this is a near future, the United States of America finally crumbled. Jake Weintraub's family fled the burned-out ruins of Chicago for the safety of the artificial island studied of Pono. Now grown, Jake works as an independent journalist, but the horrors of the Chicago River riots still haunt him. As Pono watches, safe in the Pacific Ocean, the west coast nation of Cascadia collapses under a further series of catastrophes of catastrophes. Thousands of desperate refugees arrive on Pono's shores, homeless, stateless, and hungry. Jake throws himself into covering their story, even as their suffering evokes memories of his own trauma and flight. Can Pono, a carefully constructed island society, accept this influx of strangers? Or will this crisis tear Ponoan society apart? Okay. So near future and you kind of along the themes of the world has been destroyed and changed and still going through upheaval so i don't know we will we'll see how this goes i'm interested to see how the solar punk elements are going to come through 
Next is The Emissary, a first contact novel by Michael J. Edwards. Okay, I remember seeing this cover before. Uh, a troubled young woman is recruited by a race of ancient alien explorers to be their emissary to save the human race from extinction. The problem is that not everyone believes the world is doomed, and not everyone trusts the alien's motives. Holly Burton will have to overcome opposition from world leaders, attacks by re religious zealots, assassination attempts, intractable bureaucracies, and her own fears and doubts if she is to save the human race, not just from the coming apocalypse, but from itself. She will have to become a very different person to lead a remnant of humanity into space and become the architect of a new civilization. The question is, can she use the extraordinary knowledge and abilities given to her without losing her own humanity in the process? All right. So it sounds like end of the world, um, maybe a young adult sci-fi, like the process of taking people into space. I don't know, the whole uh, talking about the new civilization kind of makes me think of Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler, but then that was set on Earth, not going into space. So we'll see. And then the last one is Mouse Cage by Malcolm F. Cross. Right, so this actually has a very interesting cover, but it's mice. Get me? All right. Troy carries more secrets with him than most. A test subject for experimental surgery, a clone gen engineered from modified lab mice, an addict. Addict. He tells himself that his past is behind him, but he'll never escape his childhood in Lake North's labs. What was done to him there, what he was made into, what he did. Fifteen years after the emancipation freedom, a prestigious, a prestigious charity invites him to speak about it at their fundraising evening. That's where Troy meets the love of his life. Jennifer, a woman with 167 clone sisters and a past she doesn't like talking about. Hurts that don't show on the outside, dark secrets she's unwilling to even whisper. Troy's perfect match. But when the past begins catching up to Troy, not even their love will be strong enough to protect him if he can't face the agonizing truth of who he and Jennifer really are. For a pair of experts at hiding from the truth, finding a way to stop lying to themselves and each other isn't the happily ever after for their story. It's the start. So it does sound like it is talking mice. I'm not a big fan of the talking animal genre. I know it's like, a youth when all my friends really like the Redwall series I really didn't so we're gonna see how this is gonna go because the premise sounds interesting otherwise but the animal part might not work for me but we're going to see um, yeah so that is the six books that book invasion is been given to read with, like I said, oh, we're supposed to have everything read and our score, our scores entered by the 24th of April so that on the 1st of May we can announce the finalists. And, and I'm excited. And stay tuned to continue watching the journey. And if you have read any of these books already or have been following other reviewers, please let me know down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Mm -hmm.